Alid Greedy's Apples One of the engines in Edward's shed was called Alid Greedy. He was painted bright red, with a loud mouth to match. He never seemed to take much notice of Edward, but everyone took notice of Alid Greedy. They had to, for he simply wouldn't stop boasting about himself. Look at you all, painted in drab greens and mournful blues. Lucky I'm here to bring some vibrance to this shed. <laughs> Edward chuckled quietly. The others groaned deafeningly. One morning, Alid Greedy felt very pleased with himself. He'd kept to time, and the passengers told him how splendid he looked. He arrived at the shed and found Gordon being readied for his afternoon train. Off to fail spectacularly with another goods train, are you? <laughs> Alid guffawed. Dear me, Gordon, how can an engine like you struggle with a few measly trucks? I hope little Edward is at the ready, otherwise you will be in trouble. Edward gave a pitying look. Gordon harumphed and hissed away. There's no need to tease him, said Edward. He— Oh, hush, Alid glared. You come out of the shed for a few days and suddenly think you can tell me what to do? I'm the lifeblood of the branch line passenger trains, and don't you forget it. With my grace and expertise, I'll have the express— Oh, interrupted Edward. Is that why the coaches needed their coupling hooks mended when I went to fetch them? Because of your, uh, grace and expertise? Alid Greedy scowled, hid himself in a cloud of steam, and pretended to be asleep. The next morning, Alid Greedy clunked into the station— still cross over Edward's remark. Be gentle, be gentle, cried the coaches. Come quietly, come quietly, he snorted as the guard's whistle blew. Silly little engine, he huffed. Now show him grace and expertise. Alid Greedy would show Edward something, just not what he'd hoped for. Along the branch line was a church with an orchard. The apple trees were well looked after to ensure their branches didn't obstruct the line. That morning, some of the church boys climbed a tree close to the railway. They thought they'd steal some apples while the vicar was preparing his Sunday sermon. Careful, John, said one. That branch doesn't look very sturdy. It's sturdy enough. Just you be ready to catch the apples. Soon, Alid Greedy came snorting along. He was still thinking what he'd say to Edward when they next met. Come along, come along, he puffed. The boys saw him approaching. Startled, they scrambled frantically down the tree. The branch John stood on couldn't bear the weight any longer. As he jumped, it snapped, still clinging to the trunk, but dangling over the railway line. Come along, snarled Alid. Come along. Hearing the thud, the driver stopped the train. When he and the firemen came around front, they laughed until they cried. That's one way for us to get some peace and quiet, eh? cackled the firemen. Apples were stuck in Alid Greedy's teeth. They and the branch muffled his cries of indignation. Serves him right. All that boasting gave me a terrible headache, smirked the driver. All day, Alid Greedy traveled up and down the line, the apples and the branch staying firmly in place. The passengers didn't think him splendid now. They erupted with laughter as he passed. Alid's face turned as red as his paint. Unlike the passengers, the vicar wasn't laughing when Alid next passed the orchard. Give me back my apples, you thieving engine! Alid tried to apologize, but all that came out was muffled gibberish. When the fat director visited the shed that night, he wasn't laughing either. This wasn't your fault. I have spoken with the vicar about keeping his church boys in line. However, I do not approve of the ruckus you've been causing. You will stay as you are. Perhaps a night of <clears throat> quiet reflection will set you straight. He spun on his heel and strode away. The other engine snickered. I say, little Edward, winked Gordon. How does the old saying go? An apple a day keeps the director away. It seems several bushels couldn't keep him from Alid, chuckled Edward. Alid Greedy had certainly gained expertise about apples, but felt far from graceful.